Recently, I've had a bunch of projects all happening at one time. And because of that, my tools have been severely neglected and they're just kind of floating around everywhere. But that's not going to work. So I need to take something that looks like this and turn it into something that looks more like this. To do this, I've had all the printers going nonstop the last three days, and I have everything laid out so I can go ahead and get my tool section organized how it needs to be. And that's one of the problems with being really busy is it's really easy to neglect the things that you use from day to day. And the other issue is my tools really haven't ever had a dedicated spot that was just for them. I just kind of had a toolbox and it ended up just being a catch-all and anybody who would walk into the house tended to do the same thing where they would just drop something on top of the toolbox and it became a catch-all. So my tools really got neglected since they didn't ever have a place that was just for them. The problem is this means I need to take everything off of the rack and move it down to the end of the room because I don't have enough space in between where the door opens and the end of the wall where I'm going to be setting up the tool area. The bad part is I don't have a whole lot of time to do this, so I need to do this in just a handful of hours because I have other projects and things going on that need my attention. I would love to be able to paint this wall black before I slide it all down, but I don't really have the time to do that. So that means on a different day, I'm gonna have to redo all of this so I can paint that wall black. The first time I tried to push the rack, I didn't take everything off the top and I found out the hard way that it's still too heavy to move. So I had to stop and pull everything off the top. But then when I actually moved the rack, I forgot to hit record. But don't worry, the rack is moved. Now, normally I wouldn't cut in here, but if you've been watching the weather, it's about one degree outside. I'm a huge fan of the way OSB looks when you paint it black, especially when you're painting on the rougher surface and not the smooth side. I like the effect that it gives and it has a real industrial feel, but it's also a more modern sleek feel if you know how to incorporate it into a room's design. I'm not patient enough to wait for this to dry, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the toolbox and just be a little bit careful with it so I don't mess up the walls. And if I do, I have a little bit of extra paint because I'm incredibly impatient. Over the last few days, I've been printing these storage solutions nonstop. I've even made sure to print some tool holders and some battery holders. So we're gonna go ahead and get those on the wall and see how they look. Now, all these parts were printed using PETG. It's the minimum filament that I use whenever I'm printing anything that's related to anything mechanical or structural in any way. If you're wanting to set something up like this for yourself, then I highly recommend that when you're slicing your files, that you set your walls to a minimum of three walls and you increase your infill to something like 20%. You're going to need the extra strength as tools can often be heavy and these parts are rather small. So you want to have a little bit more structural integrity if you're going to be mounting these to hold tools. Now, if you have your own project or you need parts manufactured for you, with today's sponsor, PCBWay, it's easier than ever to have your own parts manufactured. PCBWay has a wide range of services, from 3D printing to metal 3D printing and materials such as titanium and stainless steel. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and of course, custom PCB manufacturing. So do yourself a favor and check out the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay at pcbway.com. All the storage boxes that I'm putting on this wall is from a system that I've been designing in Blender. The idea is for it to be a modular storage system with many different variations so you can have it based on what you're actually needing to store. I'll have a whole different video on this system once it's fully complete. It's not fully completed yet. I have some testing to do and I'm still prototyping some of the different varieties in the modular system. I didn't print enough brackets, but that's okay. I can go ahead and start doing the battery mounts. 
I'll have links in the description for any of the 3D printed parts that I'm using on this DeWalt tool wall today. That way, if you want to do something like this yourself, you can go and find those parts and print them out yourself and set up your own wall. Keep in mind, there's a lot of other great designs that people have set up on sites like printables and things and Maker World, so you could set up your own tool area however you want to set it up. I've got no idea where I want to put these. I'm thinking this one, like here, and maybe I'll put like the um, heat gun right there. I don't really know. I'm just going to put that there. We'll see how it looks. For the most part, what I'm using on the wall to mount some tools are some universal tool mounts that I designed in Blender and printed out. The idea behind this was to have a single item that I could 3D print over and over again that I could use with the majority of all my tools. I've 3D printed everything else on the wall, but for the saw right here, sometimes the best answer is the easiest answer. So I'm just going to use these right here and just lay the saw on it like that. This is the last piece I need to put up on the wall, but I forgot to make a base for it. So I'm going to go over to the computer real quick and make a base, and then we'll go ahead and put that up on the wall. One of the reasons that I love the T1 Pro is anytime I need anything right away, it's really good at that. So I would be able to drop this part from Blender straight into the T1 Pro, and on every other printer, it would have been around two and a half hours to get this part printed. But with the T1 Pro, I was able to print it in about 50 minutes. So now we have our part and we can throw it up on the wall. My goal was to get all my tools in one central location and to stop them from floating around. That way I could be more efficient when I'm jumping from project to project as I'm not really looking for everything. This is about all I'm going to do today. I would say it's about 90% there. There's a few things that I plan on tweaking or adding later on, but for right now, this is going to work perfectly. If you wanna set up your own tool area like this, I'll make sure that I have links in the description for everything I've used, with the exception of the storage solution, which I will have another video coming on soon. Once that video is out, I'll make sure to update this video in the description for the link to where you can get these and print them. Because I've neglected this toolbox for so long, I think one of the next projects that I'm going to do with it is print out the Gridfinity system and see how I like that. I might even do a video on it, I'm not sure yet. But anyways, I would love to stay and talk, but I have a whole bunch of projects that I need to get back to.